environmental harm if you chuck it well and it goes into landfill. So this is Martin Lewis. Like so, you know, Martin the finance guy off TV. He's about as iconic in the UK as a beef eater or maybe even a crumpet. Your mum loves him, the royal family loves him, and if I'm going to be completely honest, I love him a little bit too. But there is a problem. I honestly believe Martin Lewis is the pinnacle of a real issue we have in the UK and it's costing us individually and collectively as a country. As a disclaimer, before I go into what this problem is and how it might be damaging the economy and ultimately what I think can be done better, I want to stress out of all the TV personalities in the UK, Martin Lewis is by far one of the best in terms of the value he delivers for his audience. This video is simply an observation and critique of the area of finance he happens to occupy and the general attitude of the British public as it stands. On with the video. To understand this issue completely, you need to understand what personal finance is, which many people do not. Personal finance is all about the financial management of the individual or potentially a family unit. The goal being to ensure good financial health is maintained so the bad consequences can be avoided that arise from having bad financial health. These consequences being going homeless or maybe being unable to provide for some dependents that you might have. A big whoop, you might think. You're nowhere near going homeless, so why should you really care about financial health? As they say, money can't buy you happiness, which I'm not going to lie, I do agree with that it can't buy you happiness, but it can allow you to avoid being unhappy. Having bad financial health is a gateway to some of life's biggest miseries. It's the second biggest factor in divorces. It's linked to an increased chance in medical problems, including ulcers, migraines, and even heart attacks. And most tragically, it significantly increases the likelihood that somebody will attempt suicide, with 3% of people who have debt problems attempting suicide every year. But the term personal finance is far too simplistic to draw any meaning or insight from, which brings us to the generally agreed five pillars of personal finance. If you're lacking in any of these five, then you well could be on the road to bad financial health. The first is income, which is purely how much you earn or how much income is flowing into your life. This is very likely due to a job in the form of a salary, but it could mean you have other forms of income, such as a side hustle, or maybe you've got an income generating asset. Ideally, you'll be making as much as possible to help your financial health. The second is spending, which is simply where your money is going, how much of it is being spent, and what is it being spent on. Good financial health with spending revolves around being conscious while spending and ensuring your money is being spent on good value items. Bad spending would be frivolously spending with little regard to price. It's important to note that good spending doesn't mean you're buying something cheap. It just means you're ensuring that you're getting good value for money. The third is savings, which is very straightforward by the fact it's whatever you manage to keep aside in cash or in a savings account after you've spent your money. This money could either be for an emergency or maybe you're saving up for something in the future. It's a bit of a safety net. The fourth is investing. So how much are the individuals putting into investments with the view that they'll increase in value in the long term? You will likely think of company stocks, crypto, bonds, gold, maybe classic cars. But the most common investments are pensions or having your own home, as these both should grow in value over time. And lastly, we have the most forgotten of them all, which is protection. Within the personal finance space, protection is usually insurance and insurance against particularly financially damaging events. Car insurance, income protection or life insurance. Basically, unlikely events which would have dire consequences on your finances if they were to happen. It's a way to future-proof your income or stop a costly expense arising in the future. So what's my issue then? Well, I believe the British have a complete lack of balance. It takes all five of these to succeed and the British seem to be obsessed with either spending or saving above everything else. Don't believe me? Well, just take two seconds to look at the popularity of frugal spending and saving programs during prime time slots on TV. If you check this out, then you'd come across the BBC's flagship program, Shop Well for Less, where they take a family which are struggling with money and then do blind tests on their much loved products to demonstrate they can spend well well, for less. Or maybe if you flicked over to Channel 4, you would come across either Save Well, Spend Better, or Secret Spenders, where they both generally look at what they are spending money on and then really guilt trip them into making better choices. But what happened if you wanted to find a programme on any other area of personal finance? Well, good luck to you. If you're looking for programmes around investing, financial protection, or even growing your income, 
then you'll find nothing. You'll be far more likely to find 15 different wildlife documentaries by David Attenborough before you got a whiff of any of these three. It's truly no wonder that the general person in the UK is basically financially illiterate. Each year they're stuck with the same five pounds thinking of how they can make it stretch even further this year. They weren't helped by their equally as clueless parents, they weren't helped at school and they're certainly not being helped right now. But only if we had a champion of personal finance in the UK. Well this is where Martin Lewis joins the picture. Martin is generally considered the biggest star in the personal finance space in the UK. He's won multiple awards for this and even has a long-standing show on ITV called the Martin Lewis Money Show Live. The general premise of this show, if you haven't seen it already, is that Martin Lewis presents all the best ways to save money and spend wisely. The topics he covers include tax, coupons, hacks, or even simplifying consumer rights. All really good value stuff that people should really hear. In addition to this, you'll likely have come across moneysupermarket.com, which Martin is the creator and head editor of, which is basically a readable version of his show, if I'm honest. To demonstrate how popular this website is, Martin sold this platform in 2014 for 90 million. The problem is glaring. You're never going to be in good financial health, let alone wealthy, if you only focus on saving and spending. The biggest irony of it all is that Martin Lewis hasn't become wealthy due to either saving or spending wisely, really. The concept of saving and spending wisely to become financially better off is a bit like someone trying to lose weight by only focusing on exercise. Yes, exercise is good, and it will have some limited benefits, but you can only outrun so much of a bad diet. Fundamentally, you can only spend your money so wisely to maximize the benefit, and realistically, you can only save so much. Once you have made the large initial savings, you're left with putting a lot of effort in chasing just a few pennies. Before you know it, you can be resorting to reusing tea bags and making two hour round trips to save 10 pounds on a TV. Only focusing on saving and spending wisely starts to make very little sense very quickly. And for this reason, it's an incredibly strong argument of why we need to look into growing our income and investing. Both of these elements are unlimited drivers of prosperity. You can always make more income and you can always have more investments. Both of these positively contributing to your financial health. The true harm caused by Martin Lewis isn't caused by Martin Lewis himself. It's caused by a complete lack of programming to create a counterbalance weight to the impact of Martin Lewis. For me, this is a failure of backing and funding by old media on educating its audience on how to truly master their personal finances. I seriously believe that this is part of the reason why the UK lags so far behind our cousins in the United States. They have a far greater culture towards investing and income growth. You only need to look at how popular shows are like Mad Money and even see the popularity on multi-level marketing companies to see this. I'm obviously not advocating for MLMs, but there is a significant hunger for people to invest and grow their incomes. And equally, and most importantly, there's multiple avenues for people to learn about both these topics over there. But I do not believe that hunger is the issue in the UK. For me, the real issue is a lack of quality programming on these subjects. And my obvious issue is that Martin Lewis focuses far too much on the saving and spending factors, which I actually think are the lesser important factors within personal finance. I don't think it's any coincidence that YouTube is bursting with content creators talking about investing and income growth, making educational accessible for the masses, rather than these subjects simply being left to one side for the already wealthy. As it stands, any individuals who are hungry to learn about growing their income or how to start investing haven't got anywhere else to go. So amateurs like me are soaking up that demand by providing our own content. I can't tell you the amount of people who look at me puzzled when I say that I have a YouTube channel all about investing. They are genuinely curious, but literally have no clue about what a stock is and what happens when you own one. And if I'm honest, who can blame them? Who would they have learned from? Nobody. So what is the solution to this? Well, for me, I think it's unrealistic for Martin Lewis to all of a sudden start talking about investing and income growth. He has a great brand, so why change it? But I think there should be an alternative to Martin Lewis who focuses on the other side of the coin being investing and income growth, especially within the old media space. Someone who can run through the fundamentals of investing, so stocks and shares, ISAs, global ETFs, blended funds, just some of the groundwork that's been chronically missed in the UK. And equally for income growth, how to ask for a pay rise, 
how inflation affects individual salaries, maybe the best side hustles or other means of making money outside of their job. Basically, a more professional version of what you are currently seeing on YouTube, more researchers, more production, better execution. As a result, I honestly believe we would have a better economy for it. This would increase the velocity of money within the system of the UK and would spur on economical growth, as after all, one person's spending is another person's income. Where the current status quo is one person's savings being someone else's reduction in income. Maybe you have come across this video and your eyes have been slightly open to investing and income growth. Well, if you want to know more about how I'm personally planning on turning £80,000 into £110,000, over the next 12 months by the means of growing my income and investing, then you'll want to watch this video on the screen right now. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.